Are you worried about missing important deadlines in your Excel data? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to highlight deadlines that are overdue in red or change them to yellow if they're due soon, like within one week, two weeks, or even a month. And that's not all. I'll also show you how to create a pop-up notification like this that alerts you when payments are due. Best part is, once it's set up, it's fully automatic, there's no ongoing maintenance, and you enjoy the benefits forever. Here's the file that we're working with, which you can download for free in the video description to follow along. So you can see we have a few different invoices with their due date, and we want to find out how many days left we have to pay, and the status for that, whether it's past due, or it's on time, etc. So the first step is to find the current date. We can do that just with the today function, and this is dynamic. When we open it tomorrow, the date is going to be updated to tomorrow. So now we can find out the days left, which is simply the due date minus the current date. Now we want to lock this one so we can move it down across all the rows. And for that, you just want to press the F4 key to add dollar signs like that. Hit enter there and you can see it's all filled down. So next up, we have the status. And for that, it's going to depend on the due within date. Let's say I put a 7 in here. So I can change the status by typing equals ifs with an S in the end there. And the logical test is firstly that the days left, if it's greater than the due within date, then that means that we're on time. So in quotations here, we can put on time, close those quotations, comma. And secondly, if that same day is left is greater than zero, comma, that means that it's within those seven days. And so we should put in quotations to pay now. And finally, the last option is when that F6 again, so it's this cell right here, is less than zero, comma. In that scenario, it's obviously late. So we need to put past do in here in quotations. We can then close the parenthesis and hit enter. You can see it spills down because this is a table. Let's quickly check. So these are on time, minus six, so that's past two. One thing that's wrong here is you might notice with this one, for instance, it's actually moved down. So we have to lock the top part again so that it doesn't move around. So it's this C3 over here that we want to lock by pressing the F4 key. Hit enter there. And now you can see it should all be accurate. This one here is past two, while this one down below that has one day left is saying to pay now. Because we've made this fully dynamic, if I go ahead and change the do within date to 14 days, you'll see how everything updates as well. We can change the do within date from just having a number like 14 to saying 14 days. And for that, we can press control one and go to custom. Down below here, we wanna add the number sign. So this one here, and then I'm just gonna put a space and in quotations, days. Hit enter there, so it's still recognized as a number, but now we have this special formatting on it. I can change this to one day and you'll see how everything updates as well. The do within section is great because depending on the company, you're gonna have different processing times for your invoices. The next step is to start highlighting the invoices that are past due. Obviously that's a critical situation, so maybe we wanna highlight that in red. We can just first select all of them, so Control shift down Control shift right and from here, head over to Conditional Formatting, and we'll go to New Rule. Within this area, we want to go to the last pop-up, use a formula, and let me move that over here to the side, and that should be equals to this cell, so it's the G6 for us, and that should be equals to, in quotations, a specific text, which is past due. Make sure that's in quotations, but to be able to drag this down across all the rows, we need to get rid of that extra dollar sign on the six. So we should only have one on column G. If this is the case, we then need to format it. Let's say we choose a fill color here on the fill tab, and I'm gonna go for a red one like that. Click on OK, OK again, and you'll notice that these two that are past two are highlighted in red. If I change one of these, let's say I put the 2024 here, so it's past two, you'll notice how that updates automatically. And if you want to highlight just this status column instead of the whole row like this, I'll show you how to do that later. That's the past due status done. And next up, we should work on the pay now ones. So it's very much the same concept. I'm just going to select the whole area, go to conditional formatting, new rule. And this time around, it's just going to change in the form of the format. So all we need to do is select the same one, G6. Again, we want to get rid of that dollar sign on the six. And when that's equals to this time, pay now, close those quotations. Then we want to format it in a different color, like a yellow. 
click on OK, OK again, and you can see the pay now is highlighted in yellow. One of the things that we should probably improve is the do within date. So over here right now we have seven days, but if I just put some text like test, you'll notice how everything in the conditional formatting is messed up. So let's try to change that by protecting it. And to do this, we'll first delete the area and head over to data and click on this button right here with the check mark that's known as data validation. What we'll do is add a list in here such that it protects this whole area. So you can only write whatever is in this source area. So let's say we can only put seven, 14 days, 21 and 28 representing a month, let's say. Click on okay there. And so now we have this drop down that shows us exactly which values we can add. If I change this and try to put hello and hit enter, you'll notice that I actually get an error. So I need to press escape to get out of that. That's the overall idea. And now it's fully dynamic. Another useful data point would be to know the sum of the amounts that are due now. Right now, we just have them as individual transactions, but we want to find the sum of them. Before we do that, if you're enjoying this tutorial, but you find it maybe a bit too fast or too advanced for your Excel level, I'd recommend you check out our Excel for business and finance course. There, we go over all of the essentials you need to know, ranging from formatting best practices and shortcuts to building awesome visual dashboards, creating large dynamic financial models, and much more. This is basically the course I wish I had before I started working in Excel heavy corporate jobs. If all of that sounds interesting, you can click on the link in the description below to get started. And if you want more than just Excel, we also offer several other courses, including Power BI, Finance and Valuation, and much more. All right, back to the video. So here we are in the file and we want to add one more bucket here that it's going to be for the total sum. So let's first select this whole row with shift space and then control shift plus to add an extra row in here. So I'll just copy this format here and paste it down below. It's going to be called something like total do. And we just want to use the sum if function such that the range is all of these different statuses and when they're equals to a criteria, so comma, and the criteria should be when they're pay now mode. Let's say we call it that. Make sure it's with capitals here. Then we want to sum the amounts. So all of these amounts here, which is the amount of the whole invoice. Close up parenthesis and hit enter. Right now you'll notice this has the wrong format. So all we need to do is press control one and go over to number. We don't want any decimal places, but we do want a comma separator and click on OK. So right now it's only 75,000 as we just have this one pay now. But if I change the number of days here to 14, you'll notice how we have a bigger number because it's summing all three. And you might be like, hang on, what about those that are past due? Maybe they should be included in here as well. If that's the case, you can just use the sum ifs function to include more than one criteria. This is all looking good so far, but now we get into the cool stuff with a pop-up notification that alerts us of which rows are actually due for payment. So for this over here, we just need to go over to the developer tab. If you can't find it, just go to any other tab, right click and go to customize the ribbon. If you do that, you'll get this pop-up and on the right hand side, you want to make sure developer is ticked. Once you do, just click on OK. So we can head over to developer and we're going to need to go to Visual Basic. When you do, you should see a page like this one and you need to have this left hand side open project VBA project. If you don't, just go over to view and click on Project Explorer. That should show it for you. We want to head over to the part called this workbook. Double click on that. And once you do, I'm going to paste the code in here, which you can actually find in the link in the description completely for free. So you can just copy and paste that in here as well. Let's go over what it's doing. Here you can see it's going to search for the range A1 to AA100 and you can obviously change this as you like to let's say AA150 if I wanted. And in that area, if it finds a text pay now, it's basically going to find the row number for it. Because it's a loop, it's going to keep accumulating all of the row numbers and at the end here, it's going to create a pop-up. So you can see if there are results, display this pop-up. And it's just going to be a message box saying pay now rows found. And it's going to say all of the rows that have been found. And if there are none, it's just going to say no pay now found in range. So you can change the text as you like wherever it's in quotations to fit your needs. 
To give it a try, we just need to run this once quickly here on the top left. And you'll notice that it says invoices due in the following rows, row 13, pay now, which is this exact one. Click on OK there. Let me quickly change that in the Excel file to say 14 days or something like that. And now we can go back to VBA and run this again. Now it should have updated. You can see row 8, 10 and 13. Awesome. So this is working great. And to save it now, because we have some code, we need to save it as a macro enabled workbook. We can do that by going to file, save as. And here, instead of an Excel workbook, we want to go for an Excel macro enabled workbook. Click on save there. And the idea is that whenever you open this file, it's going to show you that pop up first. So let me show you. Here I've got the file that I'm just going to open. And as soon as we do, you'll notice we get the pop up telling us exactly what needs to be paid. Awesome, so the pop-up is done and I've shown you this so far for dates, but you can actually do the same thing with something like stock inventory. So if we head over to this other sheet, you'll notice that now we have units. And so whenever we're below the threshold, we need to reorder. We've got here a sum, which is basically the sum of the minimum stock and the buffer. Obviously, if you need to reorder, it might take some time. So that's why we've added a buffer of 1000. And here on the right of that, we have the reorder status, which is a simple yes or no. All it's saying is that if the threshold is greater than the unit sold, then we should reorder. And if not, we don't need to. And for the conditional formatting here, you'll notice it's only on this column, whereas before it was on the entire row, like over here. If you want it this way, because maybe you think it's a bit cleaner, all you need to do is select only this column as opposed to all of the columns, head over to conditional formatting, highlight cell rules when they're equals to so this one right here to a yes then we want a specific coloring like light red fill with dark red text click on ok there and that should do it for you best part is because we've made this all a table it's very friendly to new updates for example let me just copy paste some of these rows down below you notice how all of the values still update and all of the conditional formatting is also updating I can change one of these on the bottom to 2025 and it all changes too. So for any Excel file that has a deadline, learning something like this properly is going to save you a lot of time and stress. Because we've used some slightly complex formulas like an ifs or a sum if, if you want to learn how to simplify these, you can watch this video over here or you can take our Excel course over here. Hit that like and that subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.